Andrew, take us in. Okay. Hi. Here we go. I'm taking you in. If you're not listening to this podcast uh, right now, then you're not listening to anything. That's my radio DJ thing. We were talking about that earlier. Jackson, why do you want me to take us in? What am I? What's my topic? What are we doing? Well, I, I actually wanted you to do the DJ intro or the oh, radio station you. intro, and you did it. I did. So that was, that was I did awesome. do it. I did do it. Did Welcome you? To did you want me to continue podcast. or? Yeah, do the entire show in radio format. We need to go back to the successful industry that podcasts were born from. Podcasts are right. old and dying now. We need to go back to radio. Bring back talk radio where we yell about sports. Want me to play some sound effects, like a car crash sound effect, so we can have a proper morning zoo show? <laughs> Let's check out the news, news, news. Like that kind of shit. That little Thank sound you. bite. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'll bring my topic. Did anyone else watch the Barbie movie? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's fucking great, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I fucking loved it. I can't stop thinking about how actually incredibly good it is. Uh, I guess I'm a bit more mixed on it. Really? Not maybe slightly positive, but like I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. Care to give your thoughts? Um, it just felt like the message was really inconsistent. Like I love the production mm-hmm. and the, the jokes I would say mostly landed. So I did have fun during it. Mm-hmm. But when I actually stopped to think about the messaging, I was kind of like, it feels pretty inauthentic to have this corporation bad like message halfway through when it is produced by Mattel as an advertisement for their body. I don't think that's the message though because they're very very that's not the core message well they're very very self-aware of it in the middle of the movie you have um Barbie going oh I want to talk to your CEO and Will Ferrell's like that's me and she finds out that the entire chain of command at Mattel is men and there's no women and they they poke fun at that idea the the point the movie isn't corporate bad it's what barbie represents which is equal parts uh girl power female empowerment and corporate sell out shilling products dehumanizing women making them stereotypes it's the argument of what does barbie mean is it a good thing or a bad thing is it a good thing or a bad thing andrew well that's the question that the movie asks and you got to well, think about when it. When you let when you left the theater, mm-hmm. did you come to a conclusion? I think there's room for both. I think some people can look at Barbie as a commodity that you just fucking buy and sell, and that's the end of that. And other people can look at it like I was a little girl and I grew up with Barbie, and I thought it was cool she was a fucking doctor, so I became a doctor. I think both are valid. Do you, Do you think that actually led to people like women becoming doctors, like yeah. just because there was a Barbie doctor? Oh yeah. You get influenced for your life by the stupidest shit as a kid. Think how many people watched like Tony Hawk growing up and became skateboarders and just by playing those games and shit. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I I guess it's like playing with things when I was younger. I was never thinking like large scale, like this would be life changing for me. Think about the people who uh, play with G.I. Joe and join the army. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. To be fair, as a child, you don't generally. You don't think like I'm gonna go to med school now? Yeah, yeah, yeah not as a child. I you guess can still follow your childhood dream. Plenty of people do it. I know. I'm just saying. There's a reason you don't consciously remember having these thoughts yeah, 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 explicitly. Yeah, yeah. I like GI Joe. I'm gonna enlist. I think in, in the t- in the case of Barbie, I guess it's more like showing young children, young uh, women that like it's okay and possible to aspire to be like a a doctor. Like yeah, you're not forced maybe into now. Typical. But, uh, yeah, didn't didn't Barbie start as like an extremely sexist thing? No. Yeah, I, I'm sure this is now kind of retconning it. I feel like this company just released a cute doll for little children to play with, and now they're like, "Yes, we always set this feminist goal." Yeah. Well, no, it Dr. was made Barbie. by a woman whose entire point was the doll market industry was flooded with crap. Like that's what happened. I watched a couple documentaries on it. But weren't weren't the very first like Barbies like stereotypical Barbie where it's just like a super thin plastic Barbie with? But like, you got to remember, nice she came hair. out. She came out in, like the fucking sixties or fifties when that was just the way to get your foot in the door. You know, you can't start okay. with that stuff immediately because everyone's gonna laugh. They're gonna be like, "A woman doctor? <laughs> Preposterous!" <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when when uh, so when was Bar- Barbie Doctor introduced? How long did she wait to med school? Like, yeah. Uh, let's see. Barbie Doctor was introduced in 1973. 1973. Yeah, that's pretty early. That's pretty early. That's pretty decent. Yeah. Has she ever been an astronaut? What yes. job has Barbie not done? Is there like that's, cartel uh, That's the better Barbie question. Her? What has she not been? Probably like trash collector. A trainer? No, they, they have trash collector Barbie, I'm pretty sure. Do they actually? That's fucking I, awesome. I'm actually pretty sure they do, yeah. Do you like cover his shit in <laughs> fucking banana peels? <laughs> yeah, where is trash is collector Barbie? Barbies? That's a great question. Gar- oh, wait, there. that's garbage man Barbie, I think. Where's crippling heroin addiction, Barbie? <laughs> Addicted Barbie, yeah. 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 Night nurse Barbie. Where's prostitute Barbie? <laughs> oh, I can see that. Night nurse Barbie would go hard. <laughs> Night nurse Barbie, she's just passed out perpetually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Wait, this is, this, this is not real, is it? What? I, I looked up the, ga- the garbage one. And it's it's gender swaps. It's it's Ken. They only made a Ken in uh, Garbage Man for variety. <laughs> hey, you want Barbie to be a garbage man or a coal miner? That's a Ken job. Yeah, it's a it's a big masculine man job because I think being a garbage man would be pretty cool. Just drive a truck, throw well? stuff around all day. They better get paid well. I imagine they would if it's a government job. Yeah. When was when was Ken introduced, and how offensive was that to the general Barbie market? <laughs> Probably not offensive. A woman needs her husband to put her in her place. Ken was introduced in 1961. Wait, so they made Ken way before Doctor Barbie? So yeah. they did appeal to like general stereotypes. They did, it but took them a but while. that was what the girls wanted to grow up to be. They wanted to grow up to be no, pretty didn't. and fashionable and. That was the thought at the time. Jackson, this was the 50s. They weren't really very well, forward thinking on women's rights. That's what they thought they wanted. What they actually wanted was to be doctors and trash collectors. You're right. And then a couple decades trash later, collectors. they figured that out. But it's almost as if things don't happen overnight. <laughs> Immediately. No, I, th- I, no I, th- I reckon deep down they did want that at the time. And they, yes. and they knew that. They were just too scared because they didn't have a Barbie to s- speak for them. <laughs> You're actually onto something, yeah. You're wow. not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the success of the Barbie movie, because it is mm-hmm. extremely successful, yes. it's made like twice as much as Oppenheimer, right? It has made over a billion dollars in only two weeks. Holy fucking shit. Mm-hmm. Um, a billion? Yes, it has made over a billion dollars already. Jesus oh, You can't argue with that. That's uh, pretty successful. You can't argue with people carrying the movie studio's water for them and doing all of the marketing, to be fair, which, you know, the Barbenheimer marketing meme, yeah, which I'm afraid really the movie well. studios are, they're going to take the wrong lesson from this and now force they it. They already did. Did you guys see the Saw and Paw Patrol thing? I oh, did, yeah. Yeah, yeah Saw Paw Patrol. Patrol's getting the movie... Yeah. And no, they're, they're, they're oh my God. both made by the same company. I think it's Universal. I'm not so sure, I'm, I'm looking up the list. Oh, I found it. Okay, so here's the goofiest extension of that idea. Mattel, because of the success of the Barbie movie, has announced they are making 14 more movies based on toys. I, I don't believe that. That sounds like baloney. I mean, they were going to make those anyway. Doesn't... Don't they own Transformers? They, yes, and G.I. Joe and a whole yeah, bunch okay. of other they, stuff. They already but, have like 14 Transformers movies. That doesn't surprise me. But but here's the here's the difference. The list of the movies they want to make are based off of the stupidest fucking concepts on the planet. You ready? American Girl mm-hmm. Doll, Barney, Christmas Balloon. <laughs> Barney? Yeah. <laughs> Hot Wheels, which well, I could... I his life story. Didn't the actor for Barney turn out to be a pedophile or something? I'm pretty well, sure that guy I, got arrested. I have a feeling they're not going to recast that same actor, <laughs> they were all Kaya. That's just a hunch. <laughs> all a thousand of them. Yeah. Uh, Hot Wheels, which could actually be a pretty cool movie if you think about That'll it. Be, that will be a pretty cool movie. Yeah. Magic 8-Ball. Uh, Major <laughs> Matt Mason. Masters of the Universe, which wait. Oh, that's He-Man. They've done before. Andrew. Yeah. Andrew, just wait a second. Yeah. Oh, I, why would Hot Wheels be a cool movie? What message does it have to spread? Because I feel like Barbie's only as successful Family. as it is because it's because it's it's got 
some kind of like core message. To, if to only do. there was a franchise that was about fast cars that was really popular <laughs> yeah. and made a lot of money to show us that the Hot Wheels movie could work. It'll never, it'll never. No, work. no, no. Yeah, but the, that's got the message of family. Can you put family in in Hot Wheels? <laughs> you can damn well try. What does Hot Wheels encompass? What's the going what's fast? The message behind I don't it? know. Don't overthink yeah, it. <laughs> okay. Three <laughs> tickets to Hot Wheels, please. <laughs> uh, Matchbox, Polly Pocket, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Which didn't they do that before? Yeah, they did. Wait, I think what? They what did. Mean? Yeah, I think they did it was a Rock'em Sock'em, Sock'em movie. Robots movie. I think so. They had a Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie with the guy who plays um, Wolverine. I forget his name. What the fuck? That You're thinking of Real Steel. That's not a Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie. It's not? I thought it was. What, what do you mean it's not? No, it's just a robot boxing movie where they shat, like the humans do the moves and the That's robots like close execute. enough even if it's not it is not a rock'em like- sock'em robots movie though like it's not it's not like they said it's time to rock'em sock'em or anything like it, it is literally just something that is similar in concept yeah but we 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 all know we all know that it was based of rock'em sock'em robots maybe uh thomas and friends which i'm sure is thomas the tank engine and that makes sense uno Viewmaster, and wishbone I'm very, very curious to see Uno. what an Uno movie is going to look like. I hope it's like a art house horror movie. Yeah, I mean, actually watch that. It's super scary. Yeah, you play, and if you don't say Uno, you get killed. I mean, they pulled it off with Barbie, so don't doubt them. True. I I just think there's a much larger base for a Barbie movie because she's had literally 70 years of history and stuff to make jokes on and talk about, whereas Uno's a card game, and that's pretty much it. They also had meme magic on their side. True. Well, I think it would have been successful even without the meme magic. It would have been, but not like this. A Barbie movie has no business making twice the money of Oppenheimer. Oh, Absolutely not. This was all memes. This was the entirety of the internet just coming I'm together fully, for a joke. Fully, fully, fully disagree with you there, Kaya. A made-for-families large property yeah. movie making more money than a dark, depressing yeah. three-hour drama for adults only? Come on. Come How much on, do yeah. the other Barbie movies make? This is totally different. Like, the other Barbie movies are actual, Why? like, direct-to-VHS or just on-TV-only yeah. movies. This is not... Um, so this had Ryan with, Gosling in it. The thing with this movie is on on uh, face value, it probably seems different than what it is. It's not like a Barbie goes on a magic adventure riding a horse and like being pretty and going, okay, girls, clap so Barbie has energy. It's none of that. It, it's actually <laughs> a very shockingly self-aware and meta take on what Barbie is. And I really, really liked it. I thought it was the best way you could have made this movie. Did you expect it to make a billion bucks? That's just my point. Probably. It's Barbie. Like, Barbie's fucking huge. Not without the memes. That's what I get. If the memes were that successful, which they were, but if they were that successful, where the entire Barbie movie... Here's what I'll give you. If the movie was bad, I'd be surprised. But the movie was really good. So I'm not surprised. I'm sure it's okay. That's fine. But I think it's also Ryan Gosling. If the if the memes were that successful, which they were, but if they were the only reason that Barbie was that successful, wouldn't Oppenheimer have made the exact same amount? Like, wouldn't wouldn't it also be above the billion mark? Well, it, I, I think you're just really putting way too much stock into the power of memes. If memes could carry a movie to a billion mm. dollars, Morbius would have been financially <laughs> successful. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Totally that's right. true. Yeah. It's not just memes. Yeah. Hmm. There's, I think did the helped. Morbius meme come out after the movie? Yeah, you're right. How much movie did made money did Morbius make? It made zero dollars. It was a huge net loss, <laughs> yeah, and they released nothing. it twice. Yeah. So, also to your point, uh, Barbie sixty-seven million. I, I think I'd agree with you if Barbie was not an established franchise. If if this movie was called like Pink Doll. And the whole point I, I is... I'm not saying that it would have failed. They have a gigantic franchise. Frankly, I'm surprised the studio didn't somehow still find a way to run it into the ground. But they had a great cast, and I think the memes helped significantly. The memes I definitely there's helped. a large oh, chunk of men who otherwise would never be caught dead going to a Barbie movie who decided, haha, hey, it's that guy from the Sigma Male Drive movie that I meme about on the internet. I'm going to go see this. 
Ken is my guy, hell yeah, patriarch. And they went and saw. And maybe they liked it, maybe they didn't and they're coping. But either way, I think the movie studios are going to take the wrong lessons from this now. That's my fear. I think every fucking movie is going to have a twin release now. And they're going to force these memes on us. I hate to break like this Saw to Patrol. you, Kaya, but meme culture has been integrated in the movies for the last 20 years. Like, this is not a new thing. Like, when you say, oh, they cast the meme drive guy. No, they cast Ryan Gosling, who's a very successful and popular actor, regardless. <laughs> I of know. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, whenever I see him, it's only in the context of Sigma male memes. I don't know why. They picked him. It's so him and Patrick Bates. I was gonna say it, it was. It was. Yeah, I was. I was gonna say it's super unfortunate because <laughs> they made this like woman power movie where women are meant to be the the star focus or whatever. But Ken fucking destroys them all. Ryan Gosling <laughs> destroys them all. He's the best part of the movie, and that's part of the plot too. He fucking charges yeah. in and ruins Barbie Land. <laughs> oh, what a good movie! In a nonviolent revolution, I hear. Yeah. Well, we just have to get over toxic, toxic masculinity, and men just have to accept that it's okay to like a movie that isn't made for them. And that's fine. Agreed. Yeah. What, what movie do you like that isn't made for you, Andrew? I love Harry's Razors. Mm. <laughs> mm. But they are made for you. They are made for me. I and lied. everyone. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to play along, tomatoes. but I just had to speak about Harry's Razors. And why wouldn't I? They will make sure that your ritual of shaving is minimal and elevated. You can step up your shave game with Harry's sleekest razor yet and the craft handle. Harry's is a wonderful shaving set and company that will give you everything you could possibly need for a great look and a clean look and face they've got a new craft handle that will give you the ultimate shave experience it'll use innovative techniques to integrate a dotted rubber grip pattern into the smooth metallic handle with meticulously fine-tuned contours the craft handle feels weighty and well balanced in the hand i used to back in the day shave with like really cheap drugstore razors and it just felt not great because then you're kind of like oh do i press harder and then you're just cutting yourself and then when you get a real heavy razor and you just let it do all the work it's actually a pretty good experience i can tell you that give it a shot you will experience their sleekest craft handle starter set yet for just ten dollars normally a 17 dollars value that's going to include that handle a five blade german engineered razor cartridge shaving gel and travel cover plus you can schedule your replacement blades for just two dollars Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry. Guys who've tried it say that their eighth shave is just as sharp as the first. Elevate your shave with the latest and greatest in Harry's razor handle lineup today. Get $17 Sorry, get the $17 craft handle starter set for just $10 at harrys.com slash official. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash official. And with your clean, shaven, smooth face, you can rub your former scruffles area and say, oh, this is great. I don't need any other entertainment beyond this. But eventually, just touching your beard's going to get boring. So why don't you touch your way into a secure internet connection so you can get out and get in touch with all the content that you're missing out on, thanks to ExpressVPN. Boys, the internet is a perpetually burning library of Alexandria. It's got everything. Just kidding. Everything's being taken away. Because there's Ugh. copyright and region restrictions and mm -hmm. all this stupid fucking garbage that's just actually dumb. Because you should be able to just pay for things and buy them. Not all these streaming services, not all this anything. So how about you get a little tool that says, hey man, I got you. I don't care where this co where this content happens to be locked to. I don't care what uh, what country you gotta be in to watch this stuff. I got you. ExpressVPN is going to make sure that you can change your location to a billion different places and take a look at anything on the internet you could possibly be interested in. And it's going to make sure that while you're doing that, maybe you maybe you look at something you don't want people to know. You go, wait a minute, a woman can do that with a horse? Well, I got to check this out, but I'm at my work. I don't want my boss to know I was looking at this. Well, 
don't worry, your internet data is also protected and hidden thanks to their encryption technology. ExpressVPN is super secure. It would take a <coughs> hacker with a super computer over a billion years to get past their encryption. All you have to do is fire up the app, click one button, and you are protected. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash official. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash official to get an extra three months for free. Three months for free at expressvpn.com slash official. Thank you, Andrew. Nice. Yeah. The chat said, I thought Andrew was going to advertise outright pirating for a sec. Oh, I would, would never, never do. do that. No, no, no. Yeah, because that's my job. I have a news here. <laughs> <clears throat> um, have you guys heard that Disney is going to stop selling DVDs and Blu-rays starting in Australia? Get fucked, no Jackson. Physical. Yay. <laughs> no one buys them anyway. Who cares? But no it, one buys the them, but this is, this is why, yeah, the whole just buy physical thing is just not going to work anymore. Yeah, they're just getting rid of physical things. We actually have to start learning how to like rip old DVDs, but also download stuff from mm -hmm. streams now and just preserve it that way. I've noticed this is a when I uh, big step in my opinion. I've noticed when I peruse websites where I get my entertainment that's totally legal and paid for, haha. That uh, most of the formats now are not Blu-ray or DVD rips. They just go on websites and rip the stream of it, and that yeah, just, just seems like rip. it's going to be the new norm for physical media, where it's not physical; it's just off-server. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I know nobody really, most people don't buy DVDs and Blu-rays anymore. I guess to the point that Disney doesn't even consider mm -hmm. it worth printing. But this is, in my, it's like really big news. I mean, every single day you hear about Disney Plus removing stuff, right? And people complaining about it. And yeah. now you have no recourse. And this is why I keep defending piracy over and over on the show. In the future, piracy is the only, gonna be the only way where you still get to own anything. Yeah, there's It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I think there's one episode that was removed. A couple, yeah. The only way to yep. The only way the only way to get it is through piracy. Now. Same with South Park. South Park had four episodes removed on their website and Comedy Central that you can only watch via piracy and the DVDs or whatever. So dumb. Ugh. Um, but it is it is moving with the times. It is a logical business decision. I mean, when was the last time you had a computer with a CD-ROM or Blu-ray drive? True. Consoles these days. The Switch has no way to play CDs. The PS5 has an optional CD drive, whereas you can just get the console digital. And I think the Xbox is the same way. Where is it optional or just not even there? No, it's, it's, it, it is that. Yeah, and remember it. when the format wars were happening, people bought PlayStation 3s just because it was a convenient Blu-ray player. There were plenty of people like, oh, I'll get the PS3 because it also plays Blu-rays. Xbox doesn't do that. The Wii doesn't do that. Now, you don't need that. They, why would a person buy a console other than for a game when all the media is just on the <coughs> internet and streaming? <coughs> You watch it on your phone now. Okay, Jackson, you know? you're really distracting with the way you keep coughing when Andrew's <laughs> talking, so if you can please stop. Yeah, I'll try to stop that. Sorry. Apologies, Andrew. Continue. No, I'll, I'll just wrap up early, Jackson. It's okay. I, I know you want to say something, so please go ahead. Oh, uh, can I cough now? Is that what you want to say? <laughs> I didn't it? want to say anything. That's I was why just you interrupted me with coughs, Jackson? You <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't... What is this? I just coughed. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. <coughs> All right, That's continue, okay. anyway, please. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be the last release, uh, physical release in Australia. Mm. Meaning, whatever movie they release after Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is just going to be streaming only. So I guess and if you live in Australia and they remove it from the streaming services 10 years from now, it's just gone. Unless yeah. you want to break the rules and download it illegally. Which is unethical, of course. That's such a great thing that people haven't really considered, or I guess Disney hasn't considered. When people figure that part out, where once the stream goes down, they have no way to watch it. What's the backlash? What's going to happen? You know, they'll just re they'll release a, if it's that desired. They'll release a way to buy it. But uh, this is actually ha I I'm interested in them do uh, doing starting this in Australia because we already have like a giant pirating scene like we're we're 
we're, we're raised pirates, basically. Most people pirate here, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, with, with, like, Game of Thrones and stuff, I don't think anyone here bought it or watched it through, like, our overpriced streaming services. Because the streaming services only rendered it, like, 480p. So it was like watching a piece of shit. <laughs> I was, like, was going to ask, is the- No way. No, it actually is. Is the Australian server coverage even good at all for a lot of these services? Like, can you get better quality or is it just always slow? No, I'll tell you. I, I, cause I, I, this was the final season of Game of Thrones. No, it was House of Dragon, actually, even more recent. Um, I, I bought the streaming service. There's only one streaming service that has the availability of watching it in Australia. And I couldn't get it above 1080p, no matter how much I played, I uh, paid, or no matter how much, like how many pieces of hardware I put it on. It was maxed out at 1080p, and even that didn't stick to 1080p much. Mm-hmm. It would often drop down to 720. And I have good internet. I have the best internet in Australia, basically. It's not even an Australian problem, man. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was on Netflix, just kind of killing time, and I saw the bad guys the DreamWorks movie, and I went, yeah, fuck it. Mm. I haven't seen a DreamWorks movie. It looks pretty okay. <laughs> I started it on Netflix, and the whole time I was just looking at it, and I was like, this just looks grainy. This looks fucking yeah. fuzzy and weird, and I don't know mm-hmm. why. So I pirated the movie, and it looked phenomenal. It looked perfect. Yep. And I watched the rest That's of the it pirated. Like, a lot of people these days, they got psyoped by these companies into thinking that piracy means you have to watch it in a lower quality, like a camera straight from the movie theater or something. But mm-hmm. as soon as the home release is out, you can get it in any quality. This is why Brady was coping. And, it, like, when he was mad and the streaming services crashed and were down and he couldn't watch the Better Call Saul finale, I told him, lol. <laughs> Literally, just my fucking text message as I was enjoying myself. And he said, well, I wouldn't want to watch it in a shitty quality anyway. Like, dude. I wouldn't know about this, but I have heard that right now you can go on your (laughs) local pirate sites and there is a Breaking Bad torrent, just as an example, okay? That is 1.7 terabytes. That's like roughly 50 gigabytes an episode. That's a straight Blu-ray rip. Yeah. That's nuts. You can get the show. That's a crazy amount of space to (laughs) allocate to Breaking Bad. I want to see like seven seasons. I want to see the individual pores on Walter White's head. That sounds amazing. But it's there. It exists. And guess what? One day this might be the only way to watch Breaking Bad in like 4K because the streaming services will not host it forever. Your physical Mm -hmm. media will eventually degrade. Your Blu-ray DVDs aren't something that your grandchildren will give to their children. And and yet somewhere in the cyberspace, this shit is still going to be floating around. But you're going to get called an unethical thief. If you still want to watch Breaking Bad fifty years from now, wait. Will will it eventually? Will the hard drives eventually degrade that are holding the? Uh, yes, which is why you always yeah. have to continuously move it around. Like hard drives, even SSDs, even micro SDs, and such. They all degrade. Like a micro SD, the size of your th- fingernail. If you don't touch it for like two years, there's a good chance that data will be corrupted. There is no but same the, with Blu-rays. There's no perfect storage format, but most large companies mm-hmm. that have very, very important data <laughs> back it up on physical tape because that lasts the longest and is the most kind of uh, yeah, like proof, extremely important information. And also, yeah. if you're like servers like Amazon servers, they're all constantly running too, which makes a difference. Yeah. Mm. Like a hard drive unplugged will, the data will get corrupted much faster. Well, isn't it, uh, aren't like hard drives rated on the amount of spins they can uh, do in their lifetime or some shit? And that too, but it's not the amount of spins. Like your hard drive isn't going to break when you don't use it. Yeah, it's just no, the data on it can great. get corrupted. But yeah, anyway, I mean, that, that's besides the points. Your, your, your Blu-rays will probably be fine even five years from now. But if you can't even buy Blu-rays to begin with, Mm-hmm. I'm seeing less and less arguments for why piracy makes people such pieces of shit. I'm sorry. Especially you, with oh, I, 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 absolutely, your every day. No, I don't think I don't think pirating makes you a piece of shit. Absolutely not. Uh, I think it makes you a piece of shit when you have the ability to buy and the quality is the exact same and you still choose to pirate. That's where I draw the line. Yeah. yeah that's piracy, fine. it's it's the Gabe Newell quote. Piracy is a service issue. If yeah, I hundred percent If I can just have the product as is in the right format and way and I just pay for the convenience, then I'm going to do it. If I can go on Amazon right now 
and I'll use the bad guys again as an example. I see the bad guys on there and it says, oh, buy the movie for 10 bucks and it's perfect quality and there's nothing in the way and it works and this and that. And they even say, oh, download it to your computer in case your internet goes out. Then great. You can have my 10 bucks. It is far more convenient to just do it through Amazon. But when I have to always have an internet connection or the quality is constantly dropping because of the buffer rates or the Amazon browser is lagging and the player doesn't have any options and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Why would I buy it? That's not worth my money. Even when they do let you download it, like last I used it, Netflix did have an option to download movies so you can watch them like on a road trip or whatever. But mm -hmm. it doesn't download an actual MP4. Right? It's just this proprietary format yeah. that is hidden somewhere in your file system that you could never in your life yourself somehow just drag into your media player. You have to use their app. And presumably next time you connect to the internet, they can still take it from you. Delete it off your computer so it's useless. You know what's on that that really pisses me off as well? Um, a few years hmm. ago, I'm trying to remember the details of the story, but I think my dad bought a new TV. And with it, it, it was like, oh, free Spider-Man movie with the TV that you can watch to test out your new TV. And he was what like, oh, cool, we get to watch the new Spider-Man for free because I got this TV. And it was like the instructions were like, download this app you've never, ever heard of and sign up for two different accounts. And it's like, what the fuck is this? Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's how they get you. Because the overwhelming majority of people, they go, yeah, give me that app. And they do that shit. And then they have all your data. I don't even connect my TV to the internet. Fuck that. It's my one rule. You're probably so, uh, the TV. smarter for it, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. It's sad. Save all the stuff. Be a data hoarder. Save all the shows you like. At what point are we going to start regressing and the common form of file sharing is you trade USB flash drives with each other? Oh, like high school again? Yeah. Like swapping shows yeah. through USB? Yeah. And ironically, easy. there's zero percent chance you did that in high school, Jackson. You're younger than me, and we didn't even do that. <laughs> well, I'm in Australia. We had to. We literally, we legitimately had to. Our internet that wasn't sense. fast enough. Oh, that's a okay. good question. Did Fair you guys uh, in school have any like any like backdoor computer stuff that you were doing that you know they wouldn't want you to do? That was like the thing going around the school. Other than like playing CSGO all day. In yeah, the it's usually lab. just playing games. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you guys a great example. Um, our school, to try to be hip and edgy with the trending technology times, was like everyone in the school now has a dedicated drive on the server. And it could only hold like 100 megabytes. Just like very, very much nothing. Um, but they said you could save your files there, like your PowerPoints, and load them up without needing to bring a CD or a flash drive to school. So one of my friends, who was one of the students assigned to work in the uh, IT lab and server lab, he just put the Halo install EXE on everyone's drives. <laughs> so they yeah. just download it to every computer around the building and just be constantly playing Halo. <laughs> That we actually did the same thing, Halo CE on our computers. Yep, yeah, that was it. It was on every computer. I I never understood how it was on every computer, but that might be the way someone just like installed it to the drive. <laughs> Comes pre-installed. Yeah, I was like, why are the fucking teachers putting this on every computer? It doesn't make sense, but I love it. It was so good. Mm -hmm. That that and I think uh, Age of Empires are the games that we would always play. Oh, you oh, had yeah. Age of Empires wow, too. We only crazy. had Halo. Yeah, we only had Halo too. This was actually part of our social studies class. They made us play Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. What? <laughs> what? That sounds like Australian education that right there. That sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. No, wait, it was Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. It was oh, never mind. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not learning anything valuable there. <laughs> you had us captivated and then you dashed all of our hopes. Well, there was, there was also SimCity 2000, which was great. Love that one. Was that, was that the good one? I don't remember. I remember there was a stinker and a really good one. No, that was the the bad one was 2014. Isn't it mad how like SimCity fucked up so bad that it's uh, spawned a whole new franchise like City Skylines? How do you fuck up that bad? Wasn't SimCity the first game to run into the issues and controversy with the always the online, online stuff? Always online. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it was actually. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that being yeah, a huge that. scandal back in the day. Mm -hmm. And now it's normal. Was that? I don't know how long before Diablo. I was just saying, and shortly after the Diablo thing also happens. 
Mm. Yeah, and then so there was so much outrage over that that it killed SimCity, and yet it is still now just standard in the games industry. Yeah, nothing changed. All right, it, it killed the game, but not the procedure. They lost the yeah. fights, but they won the war. Yeah, bastards. No, everything is always online. Oh, it's such AIDS. <laughs> yeah, yep. but yeah, anyway, SimCity sucks now. It was SimCity 4. That was the one that we were playing in school. And I think that's the best one, isn't it? I think you're right. Man, I miss these old-timey games. Sorry. Baldur's Gate seems good, so that's nice. Finally a decent release. Yeah, strategy it's blowing game. up. Everyone's been liking it, yeah. Yeah. I'm playing it, and uh, I've never played like a... What, what are they called, these games? Like Real Time with Pause. I don't know what the genre is called. It's, well, uh, at least the other ones were. I don't know if this one still has the classic um, RPG. I don't know what you mean though. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like a D and D but video game basically. I've never played one of these before, like any of the Baldur's Gates or tabletop I, RPG. I think I, yeah, I think Just I played a little bit of Divinity: Original Sin with you guys. We played for like thirty minutes and then stopped uh, ages ago. Um, yeah, we did that, a long, that, long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was probably my only exposure to it, and so I didn't think this would be for me. But I, I've tried it, and it's fucking great. It's fantastic. That makes me so happy. Because I'm not going to gatekeep, but I love these types of games. I play Pillars of Eternity, the Baldur's Gate games. All of which, are, by the way, the older ones are remastered by... I forget the company's name, actually. But they remaster all of the older games, like Neverwinter Nights, Planescape Torment, and you can play them on your iPads and whatnot. Um, so I'm happy that a mainline Baldur's Gate game is getting this much hype from just the mainstream. That's awesome. If mm-hmm. new people get into it. I didn't I didn't know that the first two Baldur's Gates were originally made by Bioware, which just made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> they used to be such a Aww. good studio, man. They really did. They couldn't so miss. fucking sad. Yeah. I've been replaying Mass Effect 1 through to 3 uh, this last week with my uh, girlfriend. And we've been loving it. It's been so much fun. And it just makes me so sad because the last good Mass Effect game was. Why would you set her up for failure? She'll never get an ending. I mean, she'll get an ending. Oh, God. Although, here, Jackson, let's bond. Uh, You asked me about this a good number of episodes ago, but as of a couple days ago, I started Judgment, the Yakuza spinoff. Any controversial opinions? Are you going to make me hate you? No, it's very, very fucking good. As as okay, expected of that franchise, it's just it is so fun good. from start to finish so far. Oh man, the uh, main antagonist in it. I don't know if you come across him yet, but he's so. Good. I'm I'm only I on like chapter game. three, not even like I'm not that far, but I've been doing typical thing. You know, you little little story, then a little side questing, then a little this. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's it just is so good. great. Judgment was my first one. Was my first exposure to the Yakuza series, oh, and yeah. I just loved it. I, I really love uh, Yagami's fighting style where it's just fucking kung fu and he's jumping off walls and shit. Yeah. It's just so good. Yeah. I begged Charlie to play it and he played maybe 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. It's really good, though. It is. I, I don't disagree. It's just such a big investment of time. Definitely is. That's very true. There's a lot of reading and he hates books. Yeah, books are for nerds and I'm not yeah. a nerd. It's got to read subtitles. Like, who wants to do that? Turn the English yeah, that shit on. Is all for nerds. Yeah. Of which That's I am it. not one. Yeah, you probably wouldn't like Baldur's Gate 3 then, honestly. There is a lot of reading in that as well. You do have to do a lot of reading. Which is fine if the story is, like, interesting. Yeah. If it's, in, if it's, it's compelling and well-written, there's no issue with it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's why I like those games. But they have to have good writing, and if they nailed that, that's great. I think in Divinity, it's the okay. same studio as Divinity, right? Divinity yeah, was fun. Larian. And um, yeah. they seem like a great studio. This could have happened to a better studio. They're privately owned. They're not attached to any of these big publishers or anything. The CEO seems like a pretty cool guy. Yeah, I haven't followed the development of this at all because I just saw the early access on Steam for like years now, and I just yeah, always assumed, years. oh, it's one of those fucking studios. You're just gonna let this be in a semi-completed state for ten fucking years, aren't you? Nope. But no, they, <laughs> they pulled it off. Nailed it. Not and only did they nail it, like, they, they pushed the release date forward. They didn't delay it or anything. They're clearly competent. They pushed it forward. King shit. And also, honestly, if you ask me, like, which studio would I would I have given Baldur's Gate 3 to, it would have been Larian, because uh, Divinity 2 yeah. is just so much fucking fun with friends. So big recommendation to that one, too. Um, when Once you're done with Baldur's Gate, also check out Divinity 2, Original Sin, 
which I still need to finish with my friends. These games are so fucking long too. Yeah, There's they also are. so much content in them. So I see the current um, debate online or conversation has moved from the actual game itself to the sex scenes though and the nudity because you're able to customize know, your I, cock I and shit like that. Yeah. And I just uh, roll my eyes over it because the journalists are like praising and every, everything when they're usually like the puritanical ones that are saying women shouldn't be sexy in video games. It's like making yes, people have pointed out the hypocrisy that if this game had anime graphics and it were <laughs> yeah. just like a gotcha <laughs> game, they, it, would be, it would be banned from Twitch immediately. Very which true. Which is yeah, a fair point. Fair Very point. You know, true. all of those long ass articles about why you know, Milena needs to have a makeover in Mortal Kombat because boob windows are so sexist and whatnot. And then they just literally writing articles now about why there's so many dicks in Baldur's Gate and how hot it is. It's like, okay. To be fair, you can you can, you can customize your dick to there's like ten different dicks. Well, That's hang on. Great. If you're if you're a woman <clears throat> character in the game, can you customize your pussy? Yeah, there's like four different types of pussies, I think. <gasps> wow. <laughs> this is the game for me. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love it. I, I started a character and you can like immediately just completely get naked and all of your companions, you can take their clothes off as well. So in every cut scene, I go around and we're all just naked. It's That's so awesome. There's, there's like these high action cut scenes as well. And there's like just dicks and tits flying around the screen. That's it's fucking so hype. Like, Let's go. Play this. this sounds awesome, actually. No, it looks so fun. I haven't even got to the bear, the bear uh, fuck scenes or whatever they are. You're gonna fuck the bear, right? The druid texting. I don't know. I haven't met them. Oh, you gotta. I, I you have got to feel to. some level of passion for them. First. You have to. That's you know. When yeah, you gonna, bear gonna when else are you gonna get to him? fuck a bear? Like, come on, go nuts. We'll see. The, I haven't got to any of the sex scenes yet. Apparently, the sex scenes are nuts. Remember how controversial like the old Mass Effect uh, sex scenes were, and it was basically just like super light. Uh, I don't know, just like fade to blacks almost, like barely any any actual sex mm-hmm. in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> apparently this is like, this is next level. The so industry is healing. Yeah. It's been so long. <laughs> so long since we've had good sex scenes in video games. <laughs> Are the sex scenes that good though? Because I saw a couple of clips and it looks like it's very minimal. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen them. Like it just cuts away. I'm not expecting like close-ups of the vaginas as they get pounded or anything. Like, Why not, though? I, we I mean, should we should hold them to that standard. <laughs> now you guys remember those right to hell retribution sex scenes? I where was they were just thinking clothed? about that. Yeah, yeah. Those, those really really awkward sex scenes. Oh man, that game's mm-hmm. amazing. Holy shit! So Baldur's Gate right now has is that the really bad game? Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the really bad game on Steam. One. Yeah. People would play just for funsies, just for the sake of recording it for YouTube, because it was so outrageously bad and broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was it was it one single game or was it a series? Because it's got the retribution tag. I don't know. What I do know is that um, Baldur's Gate has passed eight hundred thousand concurrent players. That's Jesus nuts. Christ for a fucking <laughs> for a tabletop RPG. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. That it must be so fucking good because usually I cannot get anyone into these games. They just look at me like I'm a fucking dork playing with my toy locomotives. Yeah, it's impressive. This is awesome. That's got to be in like the top five most concurrent on Steam ever, right? It's got to be up there for sure. Top ten at least. Top yeah, 10 top is there 10. like a. Is there charts we can look at anywhere? I'm looking at the Steam charts. It's only showing what is happening now, though, not the. Mm. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I found it. Uh, it is oh, top in records. the. It is it's at the very place. bottom. Top record. Yeah. Yeah. Followed well, and then above it is Cyberpunk. Barely mm. though, it's about to surpass Cyberpunk. I think. Well, it probably might, will at some points. Elden Ring expected Counter Strike and Pop. PUBG still as the yeah, record. Wow. No one no one's ever beating PUBG. Uh just for reference, PUBG's in first place with over three million players, and then second place is Counter Strike with one point eight million. Like it's it's a big yeah. battle to dethrone PUBG as the biggest game on Steam. That's player unknown unknown for you. Yeah. <laughs> still though, they made a good game. They released it in a complete state. They did everything right, so it's very well deserved, in my opinion. I agree. Oh, Jackson, did you want to read that tweet from that busybody guy on Twitter saying that Baldur's Gate 3 should not exist? 
Because now people are going to use it as like the gold standard for what video games should be like. It should be the fucking gold standard, you <laughs> piece of shit. God, I hate video game development. <laughs> Basically, Settle this down, guy Jackson. was arguing that, you know, usually a studio being so ambitious with a game of this scope, being able to release it on time and on budget is, they just got lucky. It's unheard of. And now gamers, those stupid fucking Nazi gamers are just, they're going to expect this from everyone. Yeah, video game developers, I fucking... Oh Gaming has only gotten worse since 2007, and I stand by that point. The PS2, Xbox era, when things came out and worked, and you got a full, complete game out of the box, it, 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 perfect. That's all I want. Bring it back. Bring that era back. People, people in the Discord are asking me to talk about this, and I think most people have heard about this online at this point. Charlie made a video about it the other day. One of my previously favorite developers, Bungie, who made Halo Mm -hmm. and Destiny, which was my Mm -hmm. most recent gaming addiction that I played for 10 10 years coming up. Um, They recently released like a state of the game, basically a giant blog post detailing where their thoughts are about the game. And it was just fucking 7,000 words of them saying, oh, video game dev hard. We We can't do what you guys want. We give up. (laughs) <laughs> they, they previously made a promise uh, or a commitment to the fan base that they release one new armor set per class per year as part of the like, DLC update each year. And they've walked that back saying, well, we can't, we can't do it. We can't make an armor set each year. It's just too difficult. Why? Keep in mind, previously, they were just bought for $3.6 billion from Sony. And keep in mind that they, every, every three months they add about four, I think, armor sets to the microtransaction store. So they're definitely capable of creating an armor set a year. It's just this video game company, I fucking, I, I hate Bungie. They've gone from my favorite <laughs> developer in 10 years, favorite developer to actually like Activision slash EA level bad. They are Jackson so applied bad. to work there like 10 times too. So it's fucking crazy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'll still apply. Aww. Again. Yeah, they're going to have openings now soon. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm still available for hire, Bungie. I'll, I'll correct the ship. They just need I you at the helm. Do that. Are mm-hmm. you still listed as the part-time CEO of Bungie on Glassdoor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Char- Charlie used to think that uh, Glassdoor was like infallible and like highly scrutinized and like a very accurate source of employee employee reviews or company reviews. And I told him it wasn't. And to prove it, I signed up to Glassdoor as the CEO of Bungie and I got approved. <laughs> so I was able to leave a review <laughs> as the CEO of Bungie. I think you made a video about That's that. That's awesome. I did. Yeah. yeah. The crazy thing is people still use Glassdoor. Blows Isn't my it mind. just for people to vent their frustrations with their employers, though? Mm-hmm. Or professors or something? I yeah, think I so. I get that. I guess it's basically just a forum. I've read that Glassdoor accepts money from companies in order to remove reviews and stuff as well. Oh, all of those <clears throat> places do. Yeah. That's the Yelp business model where Yelp will literally call businesses and say, hey, if you sign up for our premium plan, we can scrub those negative reviews, by the way. Oh, also, we're going to give you negative reviews if you don't sign up, wink, wink. It's a fucking racket. It is a racket. It's fucking dumb. Yeah, but that, that's, that's sad. Like, it's been a great year for gaming in general. I think this rivals 2007 in terms of just the level of great games released this year. It's a pretty remarkable year. But it's uh, the industry itself overall, I would say, is in an extremely bad state. Uh, Yeah, I completely agree. Yep. Video game developers don't... I, I don't know. I don't know where the fault lies because... Usually I'd be like, the video game developers aren't at fault, but then you've got people like this guy that Kai was talking about before who are, who are just actively advertising for it, basically saying, no, we can't, we can't make games as good as Larian, even though they just fucking did. They made a good game. Clearly, clearly people are capable of doing it. So fucking just do it. I it's think, possible, and they have a lot of money. I think the issue is the game budgets and scopes are getting far too large to be manageable, which is why something always breaks. Either the game releases unfinished or it's infinitely delayed or it needs a million updates or this or that. 
uh, a yeah, great example. I, I don't care though. That's that's the developer's fault. I, I used to well, I used to think that, but I've completely changed my tune on it. I don't think that has a huge role to play. I think it's legitimate laziness. Really? Yeah, a hundred percent. It will not not across the board, but. And this like, is a problem in entertainment few. across the board. Look at all these Marvel movies or whatever that cost like 350 million bucks to produce and it looks like the shittiest green screen on earth. Yeah, it's and all you're so left wondering, bloated. Where did the Where's money, the money go? going? Yeah, allocate yeah, what, the budget properly. Did they like order their catering from that gold-plated Salt Bay guy? Like, How the fuck did you waste this much money and have a product that looks this crummy? I would actually really love to know how much the budget for Baldur's Gate 3 was. The difference on movies, though, is that they make the money back, whereas the games, you can ship a totally broken product and people just don't buy it or play it. Look at Battlefield 2042. That was hyped up to shit, had a huge budget, and then it flopped tremendously. Uh, vi video, video games, by and large, the industry itself makes way more than the film industry, I think. What'd you say, Jackson? You cut out. Uh, I said, I think video games, like themselves, as products, make way more than films themselves, usually. Over they time, also cost yeah. more, Over time, but also yeah. gives you more entertainment, yeah. But the problem also is that with a PC game, they can just keep stringing you along forever, saying, yeah, we'll fix it one day. There's a patch coming, give me your money. Early access. At least the movie industry doesn't do early access is where you go to the movie cinema, the theater. Movies movies don't have microtransactions as well. I, I would say Yet. the microtransaction... Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, they fucking do. It's called the concession well, stand. Yeah. That's, wait, that doesn't <laughs> help the movies, right? That's, that's, that's the fucking cinema itself. Yeah, but it's still a microtransaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, read a, I read a funny uh, comment that I agreed with the other day. Uh, I used. They said I used to go to stores to buy games, but now I buy games to go to stores, <laughs> and it's so true. <laughs> Every game I log into has its own fucking in-game store. It's so fucking. Annoying. Yep. I hate it so fucking much. There is so much money in this industry at the moment. I don't think anyone understands how much money these video this. game companies make. They make so yeah. much money. They make look Call of Duty Modern Warfare two eight hundred million dollars in the opening weekend, just two days. It made $800 million. There is so much money. And we're not even talking about like the Chinese market with like, gacha <coughs> games and such, which, you know, mobile games in general also. Ginomers markets. But if you go on Twitter and like follow the average, I don't know, artists, they're always bellyaching about how little they get paid, which sucks. I agree. But that's also like a your company problem. Why are you constantly just blaming the gamers? You know, we pay our fucking 60 bucks or 70 bucks or whatever it is these days. It's... If that money never ends up in your pockets, that's an issue with the company. That is something stupid the games industry is unique on, isn't it? Where when problems like this arise, they blame the consumers instead of the companies. Yeah. It is literally the only fucking, like, entertainment's the only industry where it's just constant blaming the consumers. Holy the fuck. Yeah, it's, it's not just gaming, though, Andrew. I, I don't know if you keep up at all, but directors, every time a movie flop, blames the audience yeah. now. Every single you time. You just didn't really? get it. The go to. Yeah. You're, they're too stupid. They're too stupid to get it. Jesus. Well, what I'm thinking is, it's this is imagine if a actor's on a movie and he's like, oh, I'm not getting paid enough and I'm working too hard and these conditions are unfair. I blame the people going to see this fucking movie, not my boss. Well, just take some accountability and say you did a shit job. Fuck. Well, yeah, that's what a I lot mean, of the... Or even if you did... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you. Well, I was going to say, isn't that what the game developers are doing, though, where they're saying, oh, we're working so hard and we have to crunch so much and these conditions suck? It's the gamers who just are impatient instead of the yeah, company of being reasonable. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, of course they're impatient. They want your product. There is nothing wrong with that. It's just... Yeah. Why would you hate them? That's like, if I was mad that our listeners really wanted the new episode to drop, like, oh, you assholes. You scumbags, you I had to stay up an extra hour editing this just for you assholes. It's like, okay, or don't just release it the next day. But the anger is so weird and misplaced. <coughs> yeah. Well, I totally, I, I totally understand it when like death threats and shit like that are involved. But I, I, I'm kind of getting sick of that excuse as well. Like video game uh, developers coming out and talking about those because I, it just at this point feels like a diversion of attention. And there's always going to be those fucking lunatics that take that shit too far. So I don't even know like what you can do about it really other than report them. Which they never do mysteriously for some reason. 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. It's it's weird. I did, but Western game developers just genuinely sometimes get mad when there is a good game release. They did the same thing with... Uh, I saw a few of them get kind of salty. Not outright angry, but a little salty that um, Tears of the Kingdom was a good game. Where the physics all just worked. And they were all kind of like, oh, yeah, wow. Whatever, they're just using the Havoc engine. What's the big deal here? Well, the big deal is that the game kind of just runs perfect, unlike most Western products. Uh, do you guys ever remember Zelda crashing on you? Yeah, I saw developers like saying, like, how could this be done? Uh, they must have spent like 10 years working on this uh, physics engine or whatever. It can't be done. It's like a giant self report on your own abilities, apparently. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, uh, a report on that as well. Um, I remember reading a story that when Tears of the Kingdom was unveiled, the game was basically finished and they spent the final years patching things up and also rigorously bug checking the physics to make sure they didn't break the game. Uh, but on that point, there's a reason I'm still at heart a Nintendo fanboy because, yeah, Nintendo has a lot of issues. I will not fault them for that. But at least the games they release work and are playable and don't require a million updates and are functional and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, at least I get the product I pay for with them most of the time. They are so hyper aggressive about fixing bugs that. You know, whenever like the speedrunners get their hands on a new Zelda game, they just find the goofiest fucking ways to break it and just mm-hmm. do all sorts of wacky stuff. So um, the speedrunners, I didn't know this, but they apparently have to treat these glitches like a state secret. They pass around like a password protected Google Docs amongst each other in like <laughs> secret discords, That's trying cool. to discover new glitches and listing them for each other. Because if they go public and explain how they work, they immediately get patched. So I routinely see now speedrunners, like smaller ones on Twitch, uh, sorry, Twitter, complaining that Nintendo dropped another uh, bug fix, no more, whatever the fuck, shield parry bomb explodey trick. <laughs> they, they are aggressive about this. Again, same company that canceled Metroid Prime 4 because it just wasn't up to par to their standards, even though they probably would have made a buttload of money releasing yep. an inferior product still. I'm okay with that. At the that, very though, least, you know? the one thing, like, you know, credit where credit is due, they release games competent games yeah yeah for the most part yeah i they're not perfect by all means they have a lot of missteps especially on the corporate level like not looking at the product looking at the business level they definitely fuck up but their track record is very very good in terms of you paid for the product here's the product you know not oh it's early access unfinished shit oh it's this yeah when it comes to their games but not their services for example nintendo online you put you put you pay for Nintendo Online yeah. and can't even really fucking play it because it's such a non-functional yeah. pile of garbage. Oh, oh I totally, yeah. completely, 100% agree. Uh, Nintendo Online, on that topic, the biggest embarrassment in the fucking world are the emulators you get with it. What a fucking joke. You look at the Game Boy Advance emulator and they give you six fucking games and three of them are just Super Mario Brothers, but the Game Boy Advance ports... What is this crap? You have the library, you have the tools, you have the everything. Just put a hundred fucking Game Boy Advance games on there and be done with it. But no, they have to drip feed you one game a month. Like, fuck this. I think they're terrible with their services. It's really just their games they're good with. And their hardware is trash, too. Like, they're terrible with their hardware. Also true. And and that is all true. I completely agree. But, you know, games are gaming's about the games. If the mm-hmm. game is super good and super fun, I don't care. I mean, the games would be even better, though. That's the oh, thing. I, I the agree. I totally agree. It could be improved. We need a Switch 2. We needed a Switch 2 three years ago. Absolutely. But it might come next year. I've read reports. Uh, the specs are pretty lackluster. In the oh, yeah. I mean, it's Switch Nintendo. 2. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But um, according to some sources... Chinese manufacturer Pixar said in their latest financial report that they will be busy manufacturing components for a brand new console from a Japanese company that hasn't launched a new system in years, which is set to release in 2024. Mm -hmm. So it's rumors. Yeah. They didn't officially actually name drop Nintendo or anything like that, but it sounds like Nintendo in 2024. It could be be the next PlayStation. It's the Ouya. Oh. (laughs) The Soldier (laughs) Boy console. Fuck yeah. Soldier Boy. Wait, didn't he have his own console? Yeah. 
Kinda. Yes. Technically. <laughs> the soldier. <laughs> what was we it? Called? Soldier it was the soldier boy he, console. Uh, it was the soldier boy. He yeah. he basically oh. sold like those Chinese one thousand games in one cartridges on a console pirated. Did he? I actually yeah. don't think he ever sold anything. Did did he? Well, did he anyone ever get that's, that's and got what he fined like a million sell, dollars, yeah. right? Yeah, but I don't think anyone ever got a single one. Did they? Did he ever actually ship out orders? Uh, no. Not that I know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't recall him ever actually shipping orders. Maybe, maybe he did. Don't think so. All right. Um, to wrap this episode up. Let's let's try this new segment that I'm calling "Am I the Arsehole? Uh, this is this is a Reddit uh, thread that I, <laughs> okay, that I, I like said to I said to Kaya the other day, and this is a really easy one for you guys. I've started off with a really easy one. This uh this one is titled "Do People Fart in Their Sleep?" Uh, and it reads, "I apparently farted in my sleep last night. I don't actually remember it. I just remember my boyfriend waking me up, screaming, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you do that? You're fucking disgusting." He screamed at me until I was crying my eyes out. Then he put on headphones and fell asleep. This morning, I tried to talk to him about it, and he told me people don't fart in their sleep, and I must have been awake slash done it on purpose. And he broke up with me over it. I wish I was making this up. So, do people really fart in their sleep, or did I do it on purpose? I just don't remember. She's the so asshole. So who's the asshole? What a gross bitch. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. That is, that is absolutely revolting. She should be ashamed yeah. of herself. I can't believe she yeah, asked Reddit. She... They should shame her off the internet. That's fucked up. Where does she work? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I can't great. believe she'd fart in the bed. That's ridiculous. I've, I've nowhere to, I have no right to speak. Sometimes I fart so loud I wake my wife up. <laughs> which i feel guilty for but you know what can you do I, I i can't imagine being this fucking this guy this poor man in his bed being, <laughs> being woken up by a, a loud toot the victim that's, of a fart is yeah. I, yeah. that's a fate worse than death oh, i just got a shiver down my spine thinking about it Ugh. yeah so it depends what kind of fart it was she doesn't really go into detail which makes me think maybe she is guilty i mean was her butt up against him did he feel the vibrations well, hang on, hang on. What if, air? what if she sharded and is omitting that mm. detail, and he's mad that she pooped the bed? I'd be kind of mad. If someone See, I'd be mad bed, yeah. if she pooped the bed. Yeah, unless it, unless it was like a genuine accident, you know. But it, it it sounds like she might have done it on purpose. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a calculated nighttime fart. <laughs> Now's the perfect time. I think it's hilarious when women fart. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I think it's great. Not 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 in like Why a fetish way or anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd love yeah. to meet the guy who <laughs> broke up with this girl, though. I want to know more about him. Where he's like, this is a traumatic moment in his life. Where he's like, all right, we're fucking done here. I can't believe what you what you did last night. We are done. I want to know more about him. Mm-hmm. Do you think maybe he just wanted to break up anyway, and this was his excuse? Probably. Oh, maybe. Maybe. But it sounds yeah. like he's. It sounds like he's more just like an abusive, yeah, immature asshole. Um, and the only time I would ever be upset if someone farted, if it was at like, I guess like at a funeral, maybe, but also mostly just when I'm eating. Like if I'm eating and you fart at the dinner table, at the dinner table, I'd be uh, I'd be upset then. That'd be annoying. Yeah, that's fair. I don't want to hear your bodily functions at the dinner table in the first place, especially chewing noises. I'd rather you fart than make chewing noises. God, I hate those people. I, I mean, I don't like just get up and go into the hallway and fart. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's more so just the disrespect. Like I'm trying to eat. <laughs> disrespect. <laughs> 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 I love I, I think this could be a fun segment because Reddit always has the most outrageously stupid fucking posts in these subreddits know, like the I relationship it. advice I and am I the asshole am I the asshole is usually boring though most of it because it's always something like my mother-in-law killed my cat and put it in our food am I the asshole for telling her to leave the house it's like a, whatever you just came here for collapse and validation and up dudes not because you're actually conflicted I do love the I do love the am I the arsehole, arsehole threads though where the person writing it is genuinely the arsehole like they can't even write the Reddit thread without coming across as the arsehole. I, you have I an do example. Like those ones. 
not off the top of my head, but there are there have been. Some. Then I'm going to assume you made it up. <laughs> not All trust right, you at your word. That's it. I'm writing about this. I'm writing about this. On Am the I the asshole? I'll, I'll find out who's the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> For not believing my friend with no proof. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You you write one and I'll write one and we'll see who's the asshole. You guys remember when we did that for our gaming where we just wrote a story yeah. where you took a, <laughs> yeah. a Google image of a computer and you're like, man, I remember when my dad bought me this computer. It's a shame I was robbed last night. And then everyone yeah. updated it. Yeah. <laughs> Not Classic. even. I think we just sorted by top all rated posts and literally stole somebody else's post. <laughs> it, was, it was something like that. It, no, 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 no. We definitely made it ourselves because we were like, all you need is just a picture and a dumb story and our gaming will updo the shit out of it. Can I Can I have breaking news from the R gaming subreddit that I just opened to check on that? The, oh, top, here we go post, again. the top post on the R gaming oh, wow. subreddit is titled... POV, my wife who doesn't like video games has played Baldur's Gate 3 for nine hours straight today. Smiley face, crying smiley face. And it's a low res picture of a woman at a filthy desk playing a video game. With a bottle of wine next With a is that, like wait, a bottle Hey, wine. that's the life. Yeah. Do, not, do not diss wine and D&D. It's not no, that exposed cool. right. It's, it's just a, a horrible It's just photo. a creep shot. Well, it's not like a modeling shot, Andrew. It's That's probably just, not his wife. That's his plaything. He's watching her from yeah. the window. Yeah, he's, he's talking. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ! I want to. I want to put out a call. I want to put out like a like a mass announcement. If you browse our gaming, you will never ever achieve anything in your life. Because if this is all it takes to entertain you. I'm really sorry for you. <laughs> really, really sorry. It's just not. It's it's just literally n- nothing. It's nothing. It's actually nothing. <laughs> it's just nothing. It's not barely even games related. You just have to play a game. And like you're done. if you scroll down just a little bit, the a post underneath it is the GameCube passed me by back in the day. Today I'm finally getting around to giving it a shot, and it's just a picture of a GameCube in Luigi's Mansion. So you know, what, you know what just pisses me off. You scroll down two things and someone posts I made a Bowser out of pipe cleaners and it looks good. They made a little arts and crafts project of a gaming character that has 1,400 upvotes. That Baldur's Gate post of a low res picture of a woman playing a game has 54,000 upvotes. Woman playing video game. You don't get it. Yeah, are these guys still stuck in that like boyish teenage Oh, girls don't play video games, but here's one that does. Oh, <laughs> oh read the comments. Unicorn. Of course they are. What the fuck? Did you not even bother to read any of these? No. It is so <laughs> fucking sad. <laughs> Slowly, gently, this is how a life is taken to the gamer realm. Okay, so these are like oh self-identifying God. gamers. These aren't even kids. That's what blows my mind. These are college-aged people, late 20s-year-old people. If this was a forum and you knew it was populated by like middle schoolers, I'd be like, okay, fine. But these are functional adults who think this is entertainment. <laughs> what the oh fuck? My God. I don't know. Okay, so one person says, I don't know, man. She looks like a typical gamer girl. And the OP says she's a cosplayer who loves TTRPGs and is a fantasy author, so I suppose there's overlap. Then what's the surprise? <laughs> wait, wait, what the fuck? She's yeah, a dork. What? Yeah, but yeah, of course she plays games. What is the surprise here? Yeah, that. So what is it? Why is it phrased this way? That well, she doesn't, she doesn't like, like video. Games? She doesn't like video games. Other video games. She doesn't oh like Call God, of Duty. I guess it's different. I feel like. That's probably not true, though, for passion is cosplaying in tabletop games. There's so much crossover. Oh, my God. This is this guy's even baiting super hard. So, Kaya, that post where the guy replied, I don't know, man, she looks like a typical gamer girl. The guy who posted the photo said she's a cosplayer who loves tabletop yeah, RPG. He literally yeah. just said that. Oh, he fuck. just said that. Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> I got I got caught up reading comments. I'm sorry. You, yeah, you got Reddit <laughs> That was fucking amazing. Yeah. You <laughs> literally just repeated what he said. He's like, oh, fuck all that, Kaya. Can you believe this? <laughs> we're, we're on the same wavelength. That's all. 
yeah, you're sick dub. I like that the same dumb comment stood out to both of us, though. Yeah, both of you guys <laughs> seem to have missed the one right under that where he said, this looks like a typical gamer girl. And then he replied with about liking cosplay and <laughs> tabletop. Oh. Yeah, it's right under the one you were reading, Andrew. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. right. I, yeah, I, I just got it. I locked in. I fucking honed in. Target fucking ID'd on this comment thread. I can't stop reading it. There's a bunch of people saying, like, man, I wish I had a girlfriend. <laughs> I know. Is that all it takes to entertain you? The idea of a girlfriend? A Go picture outside. of a woman. Yeah, all that entertains need. them. I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of these posts are just. They reek of people who just don't have friends to talk to because a lot of these posts are shit Aww. that I would just send in my private group chat. Uh. The internet is fucking sad. It's a really, really sad place now. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> It's it's just so goddamn fucking sad and pitiful. Pitiful. Ugh. Ooh, jeez. This guy came out three. He says, oh, okay. Why do we need to know what games your wife plays? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Jackson, he underneath that was a post where some guy <laughs> said, oh, I don't know. She looks like a typical gamer girl to me. And then he responded with, she cosplays. <laughs> What, why is he getting so upset? I didn't ask what fucking games your wife plays. I didn't ask. Get it off my gaming subreddit. I'm trying to look at pictures of Star Wars Battlefront 2 again. This one has five upvotes. It just says, that's not healthy. That's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Women playing video games? That's what the, the fuck fucking is going on weekend. Here? God forbid well, someone forget their fucking problems for a weekend. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, the, the rest so of the good. just subreddit, there's nothing here. I really don't know how people use this platform. If you upvoted that picture, you deserve to have your DVDs and Blu-rays taken away. You deserve to have to pay for things for the rest <laughs> of your life. That's the only thing you're going to contribute to society. Your money. Not true. There are so many people in this comment thread that are just aggressive for no reason as well. well that's just Reddit so, in general. Like, that's oh not exclusive God. to our gaming at all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. Wait, can you not sort by... Why does it make me log in just to sort the comments? Fuck you. That's stupid. Can one of you with an account sort by controversial? Because I'm kind of curious now. Yeah, I did. There's just stuff like our wife... Someone saying our wife, stuff like that. People like coming onto the wife, shit like that. <laughs> Nothing really super interesting. Uh, Alrighty, let's wrap there. Wait, did we come to a conclusion about who the arsehole was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the gamers. Think yeah, yeah, I think it speaks for <laughs> itself. Collectively, <laughs> collectively, the gamers. Alrighty. The sexist movie goers. <laughs> Alrighty guys, thanks for hanging out with us this week We've been the official podcast You can uh, head over to patreon.com Slash the official podcast For bonus episodes Andrew's laughing, what do you want to say Andrew? Sorry, I'm, I'm still reading the comments Someone gave this reddit gold The comment is, she looks miserable <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's patreon.com Slash the official podcast for bonus episodes early access to the show as well as access to Potophiles, the new show by Kai and myself where we review uh, to catch a predator pedophiles it's fantastic mm -hmm. head on over watch it let us know what you think uh other than that we'll see you next time bye bye, bye, -bye. bye.